breaking out the steel pot and frog skins because today I have the Marushan M2 carbine imported by Spartan Imports. The first thing to note about the M2 carbine is that it's not actually the M2 carbine. It says that on the box in English, but if, once you go in inside and look at the, uh, the manual, it says M1 carbine, and indeed it is an M1 carbine because it's not select fire. The M2 carbine was select fire. This is a uh, semi-auto and it's modeled up the semi-auto M1 carbine. Uh, sort of the later M1 carbine as it has the bayonet lug for the M4 bayonet, not the M4 rifle bayonet, but the M4 bayonet based on the uh, M3 fighting knife, which is a rather short um, fighting knife they had in World War II. And they didn't make the bayonet by the time the war was over, but some uh, carbines did have the, the lug. But, um, you know, the bayonet wasn't available, and after the war, when they, I guess when they brought these all back, to get refitted, you know, after after the fighting was done, they all got the bayonet lug. So it has that more in common with the M2, but the M2 is select fire. So this is sort of a late war, late World War II M1 carbine. Orange tip, as always, here in the United States. Um, if you look in here, there is a little Allen um, screw that you can adjust the, the height of the, uh, the front sight, but you know, it was fixing the real one, and I don't think you're going to be changing it much in here. Uh, it does come with the Allen wrench to reach down there. Here in the middle, get your mag release. The mag is most of the weight um, on this gun, but it's pretty positive once you get it in there. Um, the gun is very light. The real gun only weighed, I think, about five and a half pounds unloaded. But, you know, this gun oh, I can't weigh more than five pounds. It's very light. The, the wood color is a little dark. Um, on real guns that I've shot, it's usually it's walnut, so it's, it's lighter wood, a lighter uh, walnut color. But uh, we did have some people come into the hobby shop who have um, real M1 carbines, and they say, yeah, I got some that are walnut colored and walnut stained, but I also have some that are black like this that are pretty old. So either they're black from use, because the, the oil in your hands will just leach into the wood and discolor it, but uh, it could have also been stained like that as well um, back then, but uh, it feels like a light sort of, if I was to say, this gun is made in Japan, I'd say it's a poplar, maybe. Um, I'm not a carpenter or an arborist, so I'm uh, not sure exactly what, what it is, but um, when I do buy one of these, because I'm a, a World War II softer, I will uh, definitely sand back and go walnut, but, um, you know, like I said, we have confirmation from a uh, an owner of one of these that they do come in this sort of stained color. It's a real wood stock, like I said, Japanese poplar. It has a lot of metal, um, both steel and pot uh, metal. So here at the rear sight is uh, adjustable, it's a sliding slope style, and it does have windage left and right. Um, but being airsoft, you, you won't have to slide it on the slope because, you know, the range that this gun gets is only about a hundred and uh, 140 feet, 150 feet, you know, your standard. Um, I believe it'll probably chrono around 350-ish, um, but we'll get to that later. And here on the bolt, it does cock back to cock back your bolt. It does have some trades, you know, carbine, US, uh, US carbine, 30 cal. The 30 cal bullet um, was sort of a... Uh, I guess it's sort of a, you'd call it a long pistol cartridge. You know, it was a rimless uh, centerfire bullet and the real one. I mean, this gun was meant more for, it's it's hard to shoot a pistol. It's hard to accurately shoot a pistol. And if you're a truck driver or artillery crew or a cook or whatever, you know, it's easier to shoot a rifle with little less training than it is to shoot a pistol. A pistol is much harder to defend yourself with than a, a rifle. So that's kind of why the carbine came about. Um, it was actually uh, partially developed by a former uh, convict, uh, Carbine Williams. If you've seen the, the old movie, he uh, was in prison for, I think it was manslaughter. I think uh, he was a moonshiner, and he shot and killed, a, um, I think, a federal agent or a police officer that raided his still. Um, and like, so, I, you know, I'm not going to go into the politics of it, but... Um, he developed some of the things that went into this gun, like the short stroke piston, or short travel piston, and uh, a couple other innovations. 
um, that went into this and other guns that when he was hired by Winchester. But if you want to see that, you can um, Jim Stewart was in Carbine Williams, which is a a classic movie because you know Jimmy Stewart, classic actor, classy guy. So if you want to go into that, you can read about it. But you know, takes all kinds in the world and. See what? Else? Oh, we also got trays back here. Look at that. It says made in Japan. I made mean, by Ruzhin, as said earlier. Ruzhin, Shin, yeah. But uh, you know, if you wanted a Japanese gun that was affordable, this is one of them. Retails up for about for uh, I think three forty. Um, see as we go further back here. In here is where you would, um, you know, to put your sling in, you have to have the oil bottle in there. There's a little thin and long oil bottle that goes in there, and the sling kind of goes around that and goes back out <coughs> the other side and up and over to your, your sling your sling point right here. Um, those are fairly inexpensive to get reproduction. They are uh, usually of a canvas material. They didn't really have nylon. Nylon back then was usually uh, used for parachutes. So most of the ones you'll see are canvas. There are some uh, Vietnam era ones that are that are nylon. But they're readily available. I think you can get one for less than 15 bucks. Um, it's the same sling that's used on the M3 grease gun. And like I said, they're cheap. And they'll, they'll complete your loadout. Uh, this have a nice metal butt plate as well. There's that. There's a look inside. Pop that out. It does not lock back on your last shot. So you'll be, uh, you'll be shooting blanks if you hear it, you know, the note change. It's time to reload. This is the tool you're going to use to remove the base plate of the magazine to fit your two CO2 12 gram power lid in there. Power lids are available like Walmart here at Master Hobbies. So you're going to use this, and if you look at here, it um, you can put a, a flat bladed screwdriver or a uh, maybe a quarter in there uh, to turn it if you lose this. But so basically, you put it in there, start twisting, and it, it's very smooth too. If you've uh, uh, the Japanese really do good machining. If you've had some Chinese guns that have that take CO2, it's kind of like feels kind of like there's sand in there or something. But this is like it comes out nice and smooth. And if you look in there, you just put your power lid in, put this guy back on, and drop him on the floor. You know, and there you go, and it fits 15 rounds in here. See if you notice, it doesn't go all the way down. It only holds 15 rounds like the real steel. I'm using Elite Force 0.2 gram BBs. So yeah, 350, that's about what I predicted uh, for CO2 in this length of barrel. As you can hear there, it has not liked back. Once you run out of BBs, you're going to have to listen for that change of note to know when to change magazines. If you're looking for an alternative to the Thompsons that everyone seems to have at the World War II scenario games, this is the way to go. Granted, some M3 grease guns have been showing up recently, but this has a nice longer barrel. It's got a better accuracy than the grease gun with a short barrel. Um, it's got CO2, so it's a good three season gun, spring, summer, and fall. In the winter, you might experience some uh, lower velocities, except if you live in SoCal. Here in Massachusetts, what's 30 degrees out or less? CO2, better than green gas, but still not ideal. But other than that, it's got great build quality, made in Japan. You know, a real cat magazine at 15 rounds. There's tons of accessories you can get for these two. You can get the stock uh, magazine holder, you can get the slings. If you wanted to, you get the bayonet, although I don't think any field would allow you to bring that in. And there's all sorts of web gear you can, you know, put with this for your World War II kit. And you just, you know, you can look the part. Because, um, you know, uh, as airsofters, it's, it's part of the, the appeal is, is looking in the part, and especially when you're doing a, a historic game. But you can find this and many other awesome airsoft guns here at Master Hobbies at 565 Main Street in Leicester, Massachusetts, also known as Cherry Valley. We're open six days a week from 11 to 6, uh, Monday through Saturday. In the Christmas time, we're open till 5 on Sundays. I'm filming this during a Christmas time, so that's why I'm saying it. After Christmas, we're closed Sundays because we need a day off. But stop on by, and uh, we'll be happy to see you answer any questions you have.